actually happens when you get saved, when you receive Christ Jesus as Lord. I want to talk about four quick things that happen in us when we receive him as Lord of our life. Here's the first thing. You are brought from death to life. Paul writes another letter to the churches in Ephesus, and we read in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, as Paul talks about going from death to life when we receive Jesus as Lord. So let me read this to us here today. He says this, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Transgression is a fancy word for, for sin. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. And like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. And so Paul says, not only you, but all of us, were dead in our sins. Verse 4. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us with up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. In this process of bringing us from death to life, it's done only by God's grace through our faith and trust in Jesus. We couldn't do it on our own. It's not by our works. It's not by anything good that we do. It's all by God and his good grace. Grace is this idea of receiving a gift that we didn't deserve. And that's what salvation is. We can't earn it, yet it is offered to everybody through the same way, and that's faith in Jesus Christ. We receive him by faith. And then he goes on to say in the final verses in verse 10 that, that not only are we saved, but we are destined to do good works for God, which he created for us to do. So not only are we saved, but now we are put into motion to serve God faithfully. Here's the second thing that we read in God's word, that not only are we brought from death to life, but we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Paul talks about this in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, where he's writing a letter to the churches in Corinth. And here's what he says in these verses in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Other versions might say, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. You see, God doesn't just want to make you a better version of yourself, like Kyle 2.0, like I've been upgraded to the latest version. No, we, we have to understand that God doesn't just want to make you better. He wants to make you brand new. Here's a spiritual reality that we see in scripture and we see play out in the world that God doesn't just make bad people good or make good people better. God makes dead people come to life. Now, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful to God because he wants to make me new and 
totally new, a totally new creation. You see, our old self and our old life must die and be done away with. And we must take on a completely new life of pursuing Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that's what we're talking about, being born again, because he makes us new as if we are born completely over again. We are spiritually brand new. How many of you would agree that the old self, your old habits, die hard, right? It's hard to live out the new life. But here's the truth. You're not alone. You're not the only one struggling with this new life and how to, how to transform from your old self to living the new life. But I want to tell you, God wants to walk with you in that journey. He wants to hold your hand and he wants to walk with you step by step out of the old ways and into the new ways. Over the next several weeks in this course, we're going to be talking about how you walk out of the old and into the new in very practical next steps. So how does God make us the new person? How do we walk out of the old and into the new? How does God do this? Well, not only does he make us a new creation, but he helps us to live the new life. And here's how. Number three, you are indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. Listen to this passage of scripture in Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel was a prophet of God to Israel who preached messages of repentance and faith to the Israelites in the Old Testament. And we hear some words given to him by God in Ezekiel 36 verse 26 and 27. Here's what God says about Israel and what he's about to do to all people who trust in him. Here's his words. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and I will move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Here's what God does to make us new is he actually begins to remove the old parts of our life, our old heart that is hard and calloused, and he places a new heart in us. And not only a new heart that's pliable and moldable, but he implants in us his spirit. We see in the New Testament that this spirit is the Holy Spirit of God that comes to indwell us at the moment of salvation. God gives us a new spiritual heart and a new Holy Spirit to live in us, to move in us, to help us to obey his word. And that's what it says in these verses. It says that this new spirit will guide us and move us to follow God's word. And again, we're going to talk about this in the next few weeks as we talk about who the Holy Spirit is and what he does in our life. You see, God does something in you that you can't do on your own. And in doing this, he enables you to live for him in the strength and in the power of the Holy Spirit in ways that you never could do before. Here's the fourth thing that God does is he says, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit for salvation. I want to read a few verses from Scripture, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Here's what he says. He says, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And when you believed, it's that moment of belief, that moment of receiving. When you believed and received, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So what does God do? Well, he says you are sealed by the Holy Spirit for salvation. 
There are two illustrations that Paul is using in this passage of Scripture. And the first one is that Paul is using uh, uh, the illustration of a king writing a letter, rolling it up, and putting a wax seal on it. And that seal is only to be broken and only to be opened by the one to which it was addressed. This is the idea for us, what God does, is he seals us up with the Holy Spirit for salvation. He puts his stamp on us. The Holy Spirit is the proof and is the mark of the King of kings and Lord of lords that we are his. And nobody can take that away from us. Nobody can. We are his. That's this idea of seal for salvation. The second illustration that Paul uses is this deposit that God deposits into us his Holy Spirit, that we are made new and we have the Holy Spirit residing in us. Have any of you ever used layaway at a store like Walmart or remember Kmart's back in the day? Uh, it's where you put money down on an item and you say, and they hold that item for you and you continue to put money down on the item and nobody else can buy that item. Nobody else can take that item. It is yours and it's your promise that you were going to come back and receive that item as your own. Through Paul's letter, Paul is describing this idea that that God deposits in us the Holy Spirit, who is a down payment guaranteeing the inheritance that we will receive from God one day. This inheritance of eternal life. This is what the Holy Spirit does in our life. You are a child of the King. You have been born again. You have been indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And you have a deposit in you guaranteeing your inheritance in His kingdom. And nothing can take that away.